Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to sew a rail fence table runner. This is a new pattern for us. So I've cut the piece all cut here. We've been making rail fence for a long time, but we've never done it in a table runner. So this is going to make kind of a large table runner. So I've got my four pieces cut. Now I'm going to stitch them together and then we'll see how the runner turns out. So I like to chain piece. So I'm going to take these first two pieces here and I'm going to use a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to do that with all of these pieces. These fabrics are from Robert Kaufman. They're from the Holiday Flourish collection. Every year Robert Kaufman does a Holiday Flourish co collection. It's a Christmas group. And this is the red, black, silver colorway. So it's got silver metallic accents. They're very elegant. Robert Kaufman does a really nice job with the uh, metallics. So I'm just going to leave this string together here and I'm going to take the next piece and I'm going to stitch it on to every piece, every unit in this row here. So again, this is the next piece. I'm just going to stitch it on here. Now we have a lot of customers who have made rail fence blocks before using strips, like jelly roll strips. And you can do it that way, but jelly roll strips are cut on the crosswise grain, perpendicular to the selvages. Our strips in all of our pre-cut kits are cut on the lengthwise grain. So these pieces, they don't stretch at all this way. They're very stable this way. If this was a jelly roll piece, it would be stretchy. And that's fine, but it makes it difficult to iron. And then you have to recut a stitched unit. It, it works, it works. This is just our preferred way of sewing them because we think they come out more accurately. So you can just leave that again. Now I'm just sewing six of the blocks. There's gonna be more than six blocks in the runner, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how I sew these blocks quickly. So whether I'm using these mini blocks for the table runner or our bigger blocks for the quilt kits that we sell, I do the same method. And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty quick because this is six of the blocks and they are just about done. So it's important to use a quarter inch seam because that is the amount that's added to each piece for your seam allowance. So if you use a quarter inch seam, then when you're all done, the blocks will be square. Now all we have to do is snip the blocks apart and give them a quick pressing. So I've already got the rest of them sewn. So this is what they look like. These are all ironed, and you can see, if you fold it on the diagonal there, both sides are exactly the same length, so I did use the quarter inch seams. So we're gonna take these over to the ironing board and give them a quick pressing. I'm gonna press all the seam allowances the same way. I'm gonna press away from the lightest towards the darker. So I'm not gonna give it a lot of attention right now. I'm just going to open this up. These are small blocks and just doing that little bit there will... I'm holding it down with the iron and then pressing all the seams one way. When I have the whole runner top done, I'm going to give it a more severe pressing. But this is just to get the seam allowances all going the same way. So rail fence, it's all one block. It's all one block, and 
the blocks are only going to be turned two different ways. So we're going to do the dark on the left and the dark on the bottom and the dark on the left. Next row starts with the dark on the bottom, dark on the left, dark on the bottom. So there's only two ways the blocks are turned. They're not turned all four different ways. There's only two ways. And you just alternate. So now you're beginning to see the uh, pattern show up here. So you see the zigzag effect. So when I actually sew this together myself, I don't lay the whole thing out and pick up rows. You can do that. I just put them on my lap and I turn them as I sew. So I'm just going to set them down here and I'm going to do red on the left, red on the bottom. And I'm going to put these two together and stitch. And I'm going to leave it on the machine. So that looks like that. So my next piece, again, red on the bottom, red on the left. Right sides together. So I'm gonna leave these on the machine. So I'm always, ch if you're not sure if you've got the right pieces picked up, open it up, left, bottom. going to start bottom and left. So you get a little routine going. And I've just sewn so many of them that I don't have to check that much. All of our kits come with directions and they'll have a picture of the whole runner. I just don't have the directions yet because this is a new kit and I haven't written the directions. So if we like the way it turned out, then we will add this to our website and you'll be able to buy these. Now I'm not going to snip the stitching, I'm just going to pull it back. So the rows are already together and then I'm going to add the last piece. So these next ones are right here. So this will save me time later making, and it also helps, helps you know that you don't have a row flipped around and in the wrong, wrong orientation there. So you can see how quickly this stitches up. And I am much, much faster stitching it this way than doing long strips taking them to the ironing board and trying to iron it all and then cut it afterward. I think this is really much quicker. So now all the rows are together. You can see here. Now we start sewing the rows to themselves. So you want to match up your beginning, match up the end. You can put a pin in if you like. A lot of people will pin this row together here. And then you want to make sure that you've got your seam allowances between your blocks matching up. Now I'm going to have this top seam allowance facing down and the back seam allowance facing up. And we're going to go, we're going to alternate every time. Now the reason I picked to have this top seam allowance facing that way, facing that way, is because this block has a bunch of seams and this strip does not. So it, they want to go this way anyway. So that's why I picked. Now this seam allowance, I'm gonna go up on the top and down on the back. Same reason, you've got all these extra seam allowances here. So it tends to wanna fold that way anyway. So again, I'm making sure that my intersections are matched there, and I can feel it with my finger. Again, quarter inch seam. You can always open it up. Make sure you're matched up nicely so that those meet. And then just do the same thing for every row.
Okay, I've got the last row to sew together here. The runner top is almost done, and then we'll give it a nice steam pressing. So you can already see the pattern showing up. So hopefully all my seam allowances are going the way I want because that makes the quilt lay really flat when you go to quilt it. All right, so that's the last row. So you can see the zigzag effect. Ooh, it turned out really nice. All right, let's iron it up. So I'm just gonna press it from the back a little bit so that I can get my row seam allowances all going the same way. And I'm gonna press them all this way. So these are the rows I sewed together. I'm just gonna pull it a little bit and get them all going the same direction. Then I'll flip it over and do it from the top side. So we always have fun trying to cut new patterns. New patterns are always fun. We're not always happy with the results. We never know. Hmm, is that one gonna work for a kit? Is that one gonna be easy for our customers to sew? Ooh, this one is just turning out beautiful. So now, you wanna get your seams, make sure they're staying the right way, the seam allowances. And I'm feeling with my hand to see if they're facing the way I want. And this did turn out really nice. We know we like the rail fence pattern. It's a nice, simple pattern. And when we do it in the quilt, we have bigger pieces. They're, um, they're about two by eight finished. These are really little. But you want to get enough so you can see the pattern. You want to get enough. We want to get at least three rows. And I think this is turning out really nice. I'll probably just quilt it in the ditch, stitch in the ditch when I quilt it. And I may leave it square. So some, some of our runners, we will make the end pointed like this. And that's optional, but we will cut it off so that when it's on the table, it's got a nice pointed end. This one I may leave square, but I think I will just stitch it in the ditch, maybe between here. It is big enough, I probably could put it on the quilting machine and do a nice snowflake pattern with the quilting. But I think this is gonna be really, really a nice pattern. So look for this on our website on Jordan Fabrics. Uh, rail fence, table runner kit, pre-cut. You saw how fast it stitches together. And I hope you liked the video. Give it the thumbs up if so. And uh, thank you for watching.